In this example, which comes from outside your OpenStax textbook, we're asked to determine the formula of an ionic compound by looking at the unit cells, the unit cell of the crystal of the ionic compound. So we're looking at the unit cell for the ionic compound, rhenium oxide. Rhenium is a metal element on the periodic table. The atomic symbol is capital R little e. And so this is an ionic compound of rhenium Re and oxygen O. We're shown the crystal struck the crystal, we're shown the unit cell of this ionic crystal. And it's a very complex looking unit cell compared to our metal metal unit cells, where the red dots are oxide and the blue dots are rhenium, and we're just showing a ball and stick model here rather than a space filling model. We're asked three questions about the ionic compound based on the unit cell. We're asked how many rhenium atoms and how many oxygen atoms are present in each unit cell first and foremost. We're also asked what is the formula of rhenium oxide? And then we're lastly asked what is the oxidation state of rhenium in this compound? Well, since this is a more complex unit cell than what we're used to dealing with with metal atoms, we need to remember some of our basic rules about which part of the atoms are inside the unit cell and which part of the atoms are outside the unit cell. Our blue atoms, our rhenium atoms at the corners, must have one eighth of each atom inside the unit cell. Remember, corner atoms have that lower eighth of the atom inside the unit cell, and the other seven eighths is outside the unit cell. So if we have eight corner rhenium's, one eighth of each atom lies inside the unit cell. And so as usual, that'd be eight times one eighth. That's one rhenium atom inside the unit cell. For the oxygens, this is an unusual situation that we haven't seen before, where they sit, rather than at a corner or in a face, they sit on one of the lines that describe the sides of the cube. And so if a corner atom has an eighth of an atom inside the unit cell, and a face atom has half inside the unit cell, an atom sitting on this line has a quarter, twice as much as the corner atoms inside the unit cell. So we count out our oxygens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 times 1 fourth would give us three. So we would conclude that inside the unit cell, we have one rhenium atom and three oxygen atoms. The second question is, what is the formula of rhenium oxide? Well, remember, the unit cell has to encompass all the major features of the compound, including enough information to find its empirical formula. So if there's one rhenium atom and three oxygen atoms inside the unit cell, we have to conclude that the formula for rhenium oxide, at least the empirical formula, is ReO3, three atoms of oxygen for every atom of rhenium, three oxide ions for every rhenium ion. What then is the oxidation state of rhenium in this compound? Well, oxide only, oxygen only forms one anion, which is O2 minus. If the chemical formula is ReO3 and the ionic compound is electrically neutral, each oxide has a minus two charge Therefore, the rhenium itself must be in a plus six oxidation state. In general, ionic compounds have more complex unit cells than metal crystals will. However, we can use the same type of considerations from X-ray crystallography and X-ray diffraction to figure out the number of atoms per unit cell, the chemical formula, and the density of the material, because it follows the same basic rules. Some ionic compounds have more complex unit cells that are not cubes, and interpreting their chemical information is a little more complex. So we're going to stop here with a couple of examples of ionic compounds that do have cubic unit cells. That's going to be it for our discussion of the unit cell. This concludes the Chapter 10 material.